The Prime Minister of Russia traveled to Belarus today in a sign of support for the country's embattled leader. Alexander Lukashenko declared victory in Belarus's presidential election last month with 80 percent of the vote. But those results have been largely disputed, with thousands taking to the streets day after day protesting what they called a rigged election. Meanwhile, concern is growing about the conduct of Belarusian security forces. The U.N. this week said it has received reports of hundreds of cases of torture and beatings of protesters at the hands of police. So for more on this, we want to bring in Jonah Fisher, who is in Belarus. Jonah is a BBC News correspondent and joins us now from the uh, country's capital of Minsk. So let us start with the basics. What is happening now where you are? Yeah, it's a fairly typical weekday here in Minsk, which at the moment means more demonstrations and pressure still being increased on opposition figures here. So we've had uh, some more student demonstrations uh, today. We've also had some opposition figures uh, appearing in court and being sentenced yet again to go back to jail. So a steady picture of increased pressure uh, on those opposition groups. And in terms of the demonstrations, well, the big demonstrations here uh, tend to happen at the weekend. And that's when we've had really huge turns out, turnouts uh, in, in excess of 100,000. What we've seen throughout this week, and we've seen some of it at first hand, are, are smaller demonstrations uh, where the security forces have been very active uh, in trying to break them up. We saw a student demonstration a couple of days ago where uh, there was a considerable uh, amount of violence as those students were dragged off the streets uh, by men in balaclavas and black clothing, put in vans and driven off. So uh, clearly uh, the authorities here are still very much trying to, to crush uh, what protest we've seen, uh, but people so far uh, are refusing to be daunted and still going out every day. And there were reports of um, security forces doing a lot more than just trying to break up protesters, that protesters are sort of being rounded up. And uh, at least one of the um, opposition leaders that she's in exile in Lithuania, Svetlana uh, Tikhanozaspia, I'm probably not saying, I know I'm, I ruined her name there, but she has expressed her fears that she will be disappeared by the Lukashenko uh, regime, that she will be is essentially sort of taken away and not heard from again. Can you tell us a little bit more about what the security forces are accused of doing and what's going on with that? Yeah, yeah. Svetlana Tikhanovskaya uh, left this country the day after the election. She's the woman who most people think actually won this disputed election. The situation around that is still uh, rather shrouded in mystery, but it's widely thought that she was facing some pretty serious threats to herself and her family, and that's why uh, she left the country. She's talking about people being disappeared. Well, certainly lots of people have been detained here uh, over the last three and a half weeks or so. Many of those people have had some sort of process, not a fair process, I think it would have to be said, but they have gone before courts. Many of them have been charged with administrative offences. Some have been released, and those that have been been, been coming out of uh, prison have been telling often pretty horrific stories uh, about being severely beaten uh, in these detention centres. Lots of them have bruises and marks all over them. So clearly some pretty horrific things uh, have been happening uh, in detention centres here uh, where, where, where several hundred people, possibly more than that, uh, have been held the last few weeks. And we mentioned that the Russian prime minister is heading to Belarus. Uh, Russian president Vladimir Putin says that he has a police force at the ready to assist Lukashenko. Um, do protesters and the opposition fear the Russian intervention? And what do they fear the Russian intervention means? Look, it's a really difficult balancing act for, for the opposition here. They don't like to be drawn into discussions about Russia. And, and the reason that, of that, for that really uh, is because they know that if they're to have any chance of success here, if they have to any prospect of pushing President Lukashenko out uh, and putting one of their own people in, it will have to have the, the acquiescence of Moscow. There's simply no way uh, that Russia is going to allow someone to come to power here who they can't at least work with and someone who they think is going to still have a, a broadly uh, positive uh, attitude towards Russia. So the opposition have, are very sensitive about talking about this issue. Of course, there has been some element of uh, Russian intervention here already, not in terms of the military that we know of, but certainly there are technocrats who've been deployed here over the last few weeks. We know particularly at the, uh, at the TV station here, uh, some employees from uh, Russian state 
TV have been brought in here to, to replace striking workers to try and make sure uh, that the, the broadcasts here continue uninterrupted. So there's little doubt that Russia is very closely following what's going on here, and I think there's been a fair amount of interaction in terms of uh, advising, or shall we say, uh, forcing President Lukashenko uh, to take certain moves uh, to deal with the protests here. So then what of the future for Belarus? I'm sure that there's a desire to uh, put down these protests, but uh, strictly through force doesn't seem like it's going to be working. Have there been negotiations between the opposition and the regime to maybe find some sort of peaceful solution? Look, the opposition put together something called the Coordination Council. It's a big kind of body which has uh, got a large, large number of prominent figures in, in it. The idea was that that might provide some sort of scope for discussions to take place with the authorities here, that some sort of transition, some sort of negotiations could, could take place. So far, uh, they've had a pretty firm no uh, from President Lukashenko and uh, the authorities here, and, and that no really constitutes effectively declaring the Coordination Council illegal, summoning many of its members uh, for, for questioning and refusing to have anything to do with it. So, so far, there's really no sign from uh, President Lukashenko side at least, uh, that he's willing to have discussions. The opposition, of course, say that the door is open, but so far uh, it seems President Lukashenko thinks the route out of this for him uh, is to, to increase the pressure on the opposition and eventually uh, the protest might just go away. Hmm. Jonah uh, Fisher in Minsk, thank you so much.